sets in Swift 3. Sets are the second element of collections, if you like, after arrays. Now, a set stores distinct values of the same type in a collection with no defined ordering. You can use a set instead of an array when the order of items is not important or when you need to ensure that an item only appears once. Let's see what this jumble of words means by actually creating some sets inside of our playground. Let's create a set of letters. Let's call this var letters is equal to a set and then open our triangular brackets of characters. And this holds an alphanumeric character and we can initialize it to empty with our two brackets. So now we have a set of characters. Let's insert a character with the dot insert function, which asks us for a new member. Don't worry what hashable means right now. Let's drop in the letter A. So in a way, it's kind of like arrays in the way that we define it, except we don't use append, we use insert. And the reason behind that is the language, the intricacies of it. When we use append, it means we're adding something to the end of something else. When we use insert, we're just putting it inside. We don't care about the order. So this is one of the great things about Swift. The language kind of goes after a linguist's heart, if you like. Append and insert do essentially the same thing, but with a slight difference that the language takes care of. So when you're unsure, look up the language in a dictionary and you should be able to figure out what it does. Now sets can be initialized just like arrays. So let's have a var of favorite foods and let's make this a set equal to and let's have pizza, yummy. Let's have wine and let's have wine number two. And now we have a set of our favorites. So obviously Swift is inferring the type of our set by looking at what it contains, which in this case is strings. If we wished, we could force it to contain only strings. Whoops, slight error there. Only strings. And that would also be okay. I would recommend to you generally to always specify the types that you have. I might not do it because I'm an aged programmer and I'm falling into bad habits, but as a beginner, having it explicitly defined is going to help you out so much. Right, now of course we can use methods like count on our sets to tell us how many elements are present, but we're not going to do that here because we've covered it in arrays. But I do want to show you something here. Let's try to drop in another wine element inside of this set initializer. And in an array, that would be fine. We'd have four elements. But notice in a set, we now have wine only once. The second wine isn't actually added or it's added and overwrites the original. I'm not quite sure which. So if you initialize a set with two identical values, they will overwrite each other and you will only have one. Only use sets when A, you don't care about the order and B, you have or want only unique values inside of the set itself.